Chris from Tech Tablets here with the TechLast X16 HD. Just to hands on with Windows here in this video. I've got the tablet, been running it through my benchmarks that I normally run when I review these tablets from China. And this is the eMMC speeds here. They're not too bad, they're a little slow on the 4K random right level there. And the right levels I have seen a bit higher than that, I've seen up to 70 or 80. So TechLast seem to continue with slower drives for some reason. I don't know why that is. But overall, just using the tablet, it seems fast enough. It doesn't seem to be too much of an issue there. Uh, we'll show you the device manager. It is a Hiinx drive. And the overall, it's, it's good enough. It seems good. 64 gigabytes is definitely the way to go when you're running a dual boot system. I find that uh, when you're running dual boot on a 32 gigabyte drive, that's just not enough. It's just, you're going to run into space issues. I mean, even 64 is not really that much. So that's the drive there. You can see that on the video. It's a Hiinx HCG8E. Wow. There we go. Went way out of focus then. So that's the drive that's in there. It's not too bad at all. Free space when I first booted up Windows was 32.8 gigabytes. That's the amount I get free. On Android, I haven't actually looked into that yet. Android, I will do that on another video. So that's the Crystal Disk Mark there. Other benchmarks I ran was uh, Geekbench 3, which is right here. Geekbench 3 score. Seems to be pretty much on par with most of the other tablets I've been running that are running this chipset, the Atom Z37 36F. It clocks up to 2.16 GHz, which is slightly faster than the more common Z37 35F that we're seeing in a lot of these tablets from China. So single core score is slightly quicker than those other tablets. And the multi-core score is around about the same level. Now the uh, PC Mark 7 score here is 2,238. Again, that's uh, very similar to other tablets I've tested. Very similar to the scores I've been getting. About the same score as the X10 HD, which is a tablet like this that I reviewed, which has a high resolution screen but it's uh, very similar. 3D Mark scores. They actually didn't come out too bad at all. So I've got a good uh, iStorm Extreme unlimited score here. The iStorm Extreme score is not showing up for some reason, but I have actually tested that. Seems to be a bit of a bug here with 3D Mark. I do have that saved actually, a screenshot of that, which I'll just be able to show you. So that's the iStorm Unlimited score there, 14,476, I just showed you then, and there should be... Where is the other score here, which is... I still unlimited extreme. And the extreme saw is 10,082. I feel that is coming out all right on the video. Okay, and the screen, the, the viewing angles of the screen, being an IPS, they are fairly decent, quite good. The screen I find is a tad on the cool side when it comes to the whites. Some tablets tend to lean towards the warmer kind of colors and this is definitely a cooler white with a slight sort of blue tinge when you do look at a white background here. So if I bring up the whiteness here, maybe you might be able to pick this up hopefully. You can see that it has got kind of a blue tinge to it. Just a little bit. It's quite white though. That depends on what brightness you run. The more brighter it is, the less it seems to be present there. Also to mention that the SIM card slot here, I mentioned on my unboxing, 
as a standard size SIM card, it's not actually, it's a micro SIM. So there's a micro SIM in the back here. That's a little bit tricky to put in there. And that's the way it goes in, which is quite funny. I will benchmark that shortly, and that will be up in another video. So it's a little bit hard to get in there unless you've got really long fingernails. It's easy it wants to pop back out there, so you just have to use like a tool or something to push that back in, that back right in there. And it clicks in like that. The same goes for the micro SD card, but that wasn't actually too bad for me to put that in. Now the port placement on the tablet is a little unusual. Um, it's quite strange the way they've got the setup here of having the USB port at the top. So when you're using it, you want to plug something in, it goes in the top. The same goes for the micro HDMI, which is right here. Micro HDMI is here, and if you can see, plugging in USB with the supplied cable, you've got that sticking out the top there, which is a little bit awkward, and a strange way that they've done that. If I test out here the speakers, Got a speaker, stereo speaker on either side. Once the camera focuses, you'll see that. So you've got one there, and there's one on the other side, a little slot there. Overall, the build quality of this tablet seems quite good. I do like it. Yeah, there's no real creaks or anything. It does feel solid. It's not again, bending and flexing like the Honda V116W did for me. That tablet was a 11.6 inch. Tablet, the, the build quality was really below par. This is definitely up there. Tech Last are pretty good with their tablets as of late with a reasonably good build quality. Overall, I'm happy with that. I'll just see if I can demonstrate the loudness of the speakers here. Wireless reception. Seems to be good, I've had no trouble so far using the tablet. One hundred percent volume. So they're reasonably good speakers. They're not the greatest in the world, they never are on tablets, but they're not too bad. I don't find them to be that bad at all for a tablet. And you do get that good stereo separation because you've got one, of course, on the left and the right side. So that is quite good. They're not both on the back of you, so the back side of the actual tablet, like they are on the Ticklast X98 Air 3G, for example. I find that sound, you can obviously block it off when you have it sitting on a table like I'm doing at the moment. couple of things to note about the tablet that when you do connect in, for example, a 2.5 inch hard drive, this is a uh, Western Digital My Passport terabyte drive. If I plug that in, the USB port alone is not going to have enough power. It's not like the Pipo W3F, for example, that can power these devices by themselves. What happens is the drive will just keep doing this, it will cycle on and off making this noise. It just hasn't got enough power. So what you need to do is use an adapter, like one of these ones here that I've got. This is a cable that has an, an actual connection here for power. So you plug this in, you can use the uh, plug of course there, and then you connect this up to power with the adapter. And that will give you the power you need to run drives like that. They just don't work straight, straight off. So using that just by itself, using a external hard drive, is not going to work unfortunately you do need that power or a powered hub at least is what you're going to need for that 
Testing the drive speed themselves, I've managed to get using a, a USB 3 memory stick, I can get almost 40, 40 megabits per second transfer rate. I took a screenshot of that earlier. So you can see there, so that's not a bad speed. I was transferring around about 10 gigabytes and it didn't actually take too long to do that running at 40 megabytes per second. That's not too bad kind of speed. But again, you need to use like a faster drive for that. If you're using the micro SD card slot, your max, max speeds you're gonna get are around 23 megabytes per second, which is uh, pretty slow, but I guess it's uh, better than nothing, of course. It's not like a an iPad where you have no micro SD card slot. I'll just demonstrate here a couple of demo images that I run on all of my tablets. There's a 4K and 2K video as well as a 1080p MKV file. These are all running off the tablet without any additional codec packs. These are just some photos I took on my Note 4, so they look really good on the screen. I haven't noticed it to be really laggy or anything like that at the moment. You are running a quad-core Atom, so you can, there's only so much you can do. You can't do any serious video editing or anything like that. And this is a 4K video, so that, and that runs just fine. No slowdown stuttering or anything. Windows can play that fine. If you try and run this in Android, it could be a little bit stuttery. But I will test that out in an Android hands-on video with the X16 HD. This is a 2K trailer. No problems playing that at all. Okay, for some reason, no, it's not playing my MKV file. They have a 1080p MKV, but I need to install a codec pack to actually run that one. Windows is not going to support that just out of the box. Speaking of Windows, you might notice down here that it's uh, Windows 8.1 Pro, which is great, but there's a big downside to that because it's not actually activated, which is a real issue. I'll show you this right here. I've emailed my seller to see if they have a solution for this. But you see here Windows. It's come out with a tech class logo and everything like that, but Windows is not activated. If you can pick that up there. Windows is not activated, so that's a bit of an issue. Try to activate Windows, and it seems to always end with the same problem here that uh, the this key doesn't work, product key does not work. So hopefully that's not happening to all of them, but it seems like whatever key they're using, they have used up that key and you've got to pay for a new one. Hopefully not. I'm definitely hoping that my seller on AliExpress has a solution for this. They have a key that I can use because uh, that is not really good at all. I was assuming this was going to come with Windows 8.1 Bing like all these tablets tend to do from TechLast and I was surprised to see Windows 8.1 Pro there. So there maybe that's some kind of weird image that they've put on it. They've decided to change the image and use a Pro one, a Windows Pro. And that's how they justify the slightly higher price they do charge for this tablet. So that is a one issue there that I'm not too happy with. I haven't actually tested any games yet on Windows Store. There was Asphalt 8. That's, luckily that hasn't actually, no, that's not finished error. This app can't install. 
That's probably because I'm not activated. Windows is not activated, so it's not letting me install this app. Perhaps, maybe that's why. But uh, that is not working. The camera, the 2 megapixel camera at the front. We have a 5 megapixel camera at the rear. They are both working the correct way up. There's no real issues there. I will test out the camera quality, take some sample images later on when I do a full written review of this tablet later on, which will be on techtablets.com if you're interested in that. There will be a link later on in this video description once I've finished the review. Uh, before I end this video with the hands-on in Windows, I'll just quickly show you the dimensions, the thickness, should I say, the thickness of the tablet here. So we'll just have a look with this gauge and have a look how thick it is. Okay, so the thickness is coming in at around, where is that? So that is around just under 10. So around, but it looks about 8.2 millimeters. And you can see it on the camera there. It's a little bit hard to pick that up. So around 8.28. Eight, maybe going towards nine actually. Nine millimeters, just shy of nine millimeters is the thickness of the tablet. It's uh, not too bad at all. It's, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's quite solid, good feeling tablet. There's no like flexing issues, there's no noises or anything. When I'm pressing around here, there's no panels coming off. It's not like the screen is trying to separate there from the backing metal backing plate that they've used. It's overall quite solid. The uh, Screen is great, brightness seems pretty good. There is an issue with the, with the battery, uh, with a battery meter. This is a common issue that's happening to a lot of these tech last tablets, dual boot tablets it seems, that once you change operating systems, the battery meter is only detecting one of the cells. So there we've, we've got only 14,000, when that was supposed to be uh, around 28. Originally it did detect 28, it's now de detecting only one battery cell there, so it will stick to 7% and it could sit there for three hours. Battery life, I have not used it enough yet to gauge just how, how many hours I can get out of this, but I, I think you're looking around probably six or seven hours, similar to other Tech Blast tablets. It does have that 8,000 milliamp hour, 8,500 milliamp hour battery in it, which is the same battery capacity which they use in their Tech Last X98 Air 3G. And the weight of the tablet, and just have a look. So it's coming in around, pretty hard to see that, sorry that's not very clear. 1.625 pounds and in grams, that will be around 500, I think. Just have a look now. Weight of the tablet in grams is, actually no, that's a lot higher. In grams, that's 631 grams. So it's not the lightest tablet. And you can see that there. No, it's not really coming out. So 631 grams is the weight of the tablet there. Okay, so that's the hands-on in Windows of the Techlast X16 HD 3G. If you like this video, please do give me a like and do subscribe for more up-and-coming videos of this tablet and many other ones from China that I'm expecting to arrive any day soon now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully see you in my next video. Bye for now.